I call uh, Sir William C.O. Thank you, Mr Speaker, for the opportunity. I, that last speaker had difficulty believing what he was saying about the mandate. That was an unbelievable gesture, Mr Speaker, because he says that they have a mandate from the New Zealanders to sell off state assets when he knows full well they've only got 59 members in a 121-member house, Mr Speaker. They're going to rely on Mr Banks, who is a National Party member, uh, masquerading as an ACT Party member. They're going to rely on uh, Peter Dunn. They're going to rely on the Māori Party, which, by all accords, aren't going to be part of that party. How can they have a mandate of 59 members in a 121-member house, sir, when over a million people did not vote. A million people did not vote. They need to be worried, sir. They do not have the mandate, not whatsoever, from the public of New Zealand. They do not have the mandate at all to sell off the assets that they intend of doing. Mr Speaker, I want to congratulate you and welcome you to your role. And I look forward, uh, no doubt, in the not-too-distant future, perhaps to recognise and congratulate you when you are wearing the full regalia of the Office of Speaker of the House. I also want to uh, acknowledge and welcome all the other new members who are here, and particularly acknowledge also Leo uh, Asenati Taylor. We have heard, Mr Speaker, from this side of the House, from the Government, we've been promised a brighter future, more jobs, higher incomes. And only last week, sir, the final quarter of last year, the Household Labour Survey, Labour Force Survey was released, and it is not a brighter future. Last Friday, sir, for many workers, for many workers, for many small businesses, it is not a brighter future. This is what they've, this is what they've said in this speech that they've given us and repeated by many of their members. But I want to say to you, sir, that the community are saying, look, they are working on the basis that they can fool some of the people some of the time, or all the people some of the time, but we're going to work on the basis of the next three years. They cannot fool all the people all the time. When they say that they are going to provide a brighter future, I would ask, sir, that they go out and talk to workers in Manukau, talk to small businesses up and down this country, and ask them how are they feeling about what they're experiencing at the moment. Last Friday, I met with uh, workers from Criteria, East Tamaki, a manufacturing company that has gone into receivership. 180 workers are affected, sir. Some of those 20, 30 years working in the same job have lost their jobs. There are no jobs out there. Yes, this government promised 170,000 jobs over four years. So far, if they are to be on track, they've got to create 36,000 jobs. So far, we have only can count about 10,000, but they haven't done it. That is due to the struggles and the battles of small business, which are the backbone of this, com of this country, sir. These people who lost jobs last Friday through no fault of their own, do they feel that they've got a brighter future? The answer is no, sir. There is no brighter future for some of these, many of these families, particularly those with school children, teenagers that they have got to support. There are no jobs, sir, out there, but that's what we've been promised. There is no plan, yet they attempt to make out as if they've got a plan. When you look at the 120 points that they keep throwing out, sir, none of that makes sense to ordinary people, hard-working workers, small businesses who are struggling to pay their bills in the, rising, uh, in the face of rising cost of living, in the face of uncertainty in the future. Those who have lost jobs are having to struggle because when they get re-employed for the lucky few, they are having to be paid lower wages than what they were paid before. So, so We've got to hold this government to account. If they are going to be making those promises, then we, yourself, every member of this opposition side, have got to make sure that they honour those words 
because when you consider over a million people did not vote in this election, you've got to ask yourself, sir, why is that? Just because they're in the government seat doesn't mean that they are trusted. Just because they are holding the offices of power doesn't mean that the people accept what they are, that they, what they're going to do for this country. So I say, sir, we've all just heard a lot of hogwash from this government. They made promises that just do not turn out to be reality for many, many families of the length and breadth of New Zealand. The world has changed, sir, but the national answers haven't. They still think that by sitting on their hands that the economic forces that are there will simply create the jobs that they're promising that they'll create. Sitting on your hands, sir, isn't going to do it. They've got to come up with a comprehensive plan that all of us can follow, that all of us can see, and all of us can make a contribution in. It's not just easy, sir. It's not just enough for them to simply say these jobs are going to evaporate out of thin air. It's not just uh, acceptable, sir, when they say that they'll sell off the assets and all will be well. That is not prosperity. Selling off our state assets, the assets that members of our country own, elderly, those who have contributed significantly over the many, many years, those assets belong to the New Zealand public. And if they took the time to read the many, many polls that have been made available, so they will know that it is because they're in the seat in power does not mean that they have the right to flog off those assets. That's right. Sir, over 113 New Zealanders have left our shores for Australia. Over 113 New Zealanders have left our shores to go over to Australia. Why is that, sir? They've given up, under this government, they've given up hope of a brighter future. For them, sir, going across the ditch to Australia provides a brighter and a more confident future for their families than hanging around with Mr. Key in the helm of power. So they don't like hearing that. But it was them that said that they would reduce the number of New Zealanders going across the ditch to Australia. 113 all under their particular watch. So they've said to us that they are focused on the young people of New Zealand, particularly Māori and Pacific. Haven't seen any of that. 41% unemployed, sir, of young people ages 15 to 19, not in education, employment or training, all under Mr Key's watch, all under the national government's watch. Close to 65,000, sir, of ages 15 to 24 are not in education, not in employment or training. They think that by allowing these young people not to be in an education or training or sweeping them under the carpet, that all is going to be well. So they are wasting our young people. They are wasting the potential of this country. They are wasting the potential of our communities who want a brighter future, who want to be able to work, who want to earn higher incomes, who want to have their children get an education, sir, who want to get into a house of their own. But so far, all that we have heard from this government is empty promises that things are going to get better, empty promises that it will be brighter around the corner. Sir, they have been in power for the last three going on four years, and all that I have heard, all that my community have heard, is empty promises, empty promises. And so, sir, we will hold them to account. We will hold them to account in the next three years, and I move that we support the motion that my colleague David Shearer, the leader of the Labour Party, has moved, and that is that the national-led government will sell New Zealand assets against the will of the public. The government has no ideas to create jobs or clean and innovative New Zealand, that the government is widening the gap between the very rich and the rest, and therefore this House has no confidence in the national-led government. So New Zealanders are battling to stay afloat. New Zealanders are battling to make ends meet, and all we get is empty promises. And I say to you, sir, that the people of Margaret are sick and tired of empty promises from Mr Key and the national government. Gareth Hughes.
Well done, Mr. Speaker. Namahinui Kia Koto Kia ora. I'd like to greet all members.